Hey guys, are you ready to brush up on your playback options in Pro Tools? Okay, so in a previous episode on essential settings in Pro Tools, we already discussed the difference between a timeline and edit selection and covered the link timeline and edit selection option in Pro Tools. I'll put a card up here on the screen so you can check out that video if you haven't already because it's a good foundational point for what we will cover in this video. Now, when we talk about the timeline and edit selections, we can also discuss the playback and edit cursor locations. The playback cursor location is related to the timeline selection and the edit cursor is related to the edit selection. So today we will discuss the settings that affect the playback cursor location location. So let's get into it. So you can click in the rulers area, which is also called the timeline display area to set a playback point. This works to set a playback point, whether the timeline and edit selections are linked or not. And playback will now start at this point when you hit spacebar to start playback or use whatever method you prefer to start playback. Now, there are settings that let you adjust what happens after you hit play. And that's what we are really digging into today. With some of these settings, which we'll get into, the playback cursor can travel off what's visible on your screen. If this happens, you might or might not have noticed that Pro Tools has a built-in playback cursor locator that can help you find your playback cursor. You'll notice this locator appear in your main time-based ruler, which is whichever ruler in the rulers area is currently highlighted and matches the units of measurement on your main time counter. The playback cursor locator appears on the far left or right hand side of that main time base ruler, depending on the direction in which the playback cursor is located, and it's just a little blue arrow. If any of your tracks are record enabled, then you'll notice that the little blue arrow becomes a little red arrow. So now that we all know that that's a thing, let's talk about our scrolling options. Scrolling options control how your edit window material is displayed during playback and recording. If you go to options, then edit window scrolling, you'll see your scrolling options, which are no scrolling, after playback, page, and continuous. The no scrolling option essentially disables scrolling. This allows the cursor to pass outside of your screen's view. It makes it so that Pro Tools won't scroll the edit window to keep up with the playback cursor during playback and recording. So, when the playback cursor drifts off the screen, then the edit window doesn't reposition at all, even when I pause playback or during playback. When this happens, you'll notice that little blue arrow, that playback cursor locator that we were talking about, appears in the rulers area. Something that's handy to know is that if you're in the no scrolling option and hit play, or even if you travel away from your playback cursor for any reason, you can always click on the playback cursor locator, and that will cause your screen's view to jump so that it's centered around the playback cursor. So that's just another way to travel around within your Pro Tools session. So that's no scrolling. So now let's talk about the page scrolling option. Under this option, Pro Tools is now able to reposition or scroll that edit window based on the playback cursor location. The page scrolling option causes the edit window to scroll by one page, which is equivalent to one screen, at a time while that playback cursor is moving. What that translates to is that when the page scrolling option is checked off, which means it's enabled, then the playback cursor will move across your screen during playback or recording. But when it hits the edge of the screen, all your edit window contents will quickly scroll by one screen value. And then we will see the cursor continue to move along with the playback from the far left side of the screen to the right. Now, the after playback option acts just like the no scrolling option when playing back or recording, but once you pause that playback or record, your edit window view will jump so that it's centered around wherever that playback ended. You'll notice with this that if you don't have insertion follows playback active, then your screen will still jump to wherever the playback ended and not to where the playback cursor is located, since the playback cursor jumps back to wherever you started playback when insertion follows playback is inactive. Okay, I hope that made sense. So finally, the continuous scrolling option ensures that your cursor is always in the center of your edit window view. This way kind of reminds me of how it looks when you're looking at a tape machine, with the tape head staying constant, just like your playback cursor here, and the tape, which is like your tracks on your edit window view here, moving past the tape head. It's kind of cool, but I never really use this mode. But it's a personal preference type of setting, so maybe you'll like this option. So that's about it, but as a side note, if you ever notice that one of your scrolling options doesn't seem to be working quite right, then I suggest zooming out a bit. So that's all we have time for today. I hope you guys like this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I have kind of a random one and I wanna know what songs do you think have the best production and why? Please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please check out my Patreon, hit the little like button on this video, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos videos every other Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay. <sighs>